my story is I think it started when I first noticed it anyway it was in 1999 I was uh, living in Honolulu Hawaii when I look back I was surprised to think it was before 9-11 before the military intelligence you know before they got their additional power and stuff so I was surprised they started so early and of all places in Hawaii you think it was the Aloha state that people wouldn't do such things but uh, there is a huge military presence there in Hawaii and I was on Oahu so it started there started at work people just mobbing me at work I think they put in cameras where I where I lived cameras and mic and I'd go to work the next day and they'd make comments about what they saw at night in my home and so that sort of started freaking me out I was just feeling really bad because I went to Hawaii to find my dream I just you know I wanted to surf while I was surfing I wanted to have a good life, find a girlfriend, and you know all this, you know, romantic stuff they try to sell you on commercials. But instead, I got gang stalked. So I started breaking down mentally, and I was a Buddhist back then, and I think they even got to the people where I used to worship I um, even my like my cousins and family and my friends even you know they got to my friends that's what tripped me out is it started with a friend who I trusted and I just I could not figure out why all these people would betray me so um, I was, I was real. I started really breaking down, and then I moved back to Dallas, where my my parents, my siblings were. In 1999, I was let's see, well in 2000 I was 28, so I was 27. So I moved back to Dallas, hoping to get away from them but they followed me here and at that time I you know my feeling was the internet was still sort of young I tried to do some searching on what was happening to me but couldn't find any resources and I had no idea who it was all I knew is that they followed me to Dallas and um, I was coming I came here hoping that you know I could you know rely on my family or somebody to be on my side and everybody just turned against me my family you know my friends here that I knew from childhood I tried to go to church it was gang stalkers at church. I eventually went to a therapist because I found out I was sexually abused as a child. And I think she, she did help me in ways, but I think she was part of the group. She didn't try to make me worse, but when I told her about the gang stalking, she just said it was psychosis. And I've heard about the government network of therapists and you know another way the reason why I thought she was part of the group is because I share stuff with her in our session next day I'd go to work and people would talk about what was in our session where it's supposed to be client doctor confidentiality but you know people would talk about our stuff and at the same time, she would have knowledge of stuff going on 
my life that I didn't tell her about. So even her, I went to church. You know, there are gang stalkers at church. I went to 12-step meetings because I had some addictions. And so, you know, the gang stalking I was trying to work on, but I really, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any resources. I didn't have any information. So I just thought I'd work on myself. And so I did that. But what I'd like to say, and which I've seen on the internet about other people, is in 2001 I started working, but then I started um, having this bad feeling that people had access to my thoughts. And, you know, I've seen that they have different ways of doing this, some of it might be just reading brain waves and interpreting it but I think for me there's a chip in my head which they implanted in me when I was a child and so for that I believe my parents or somehow they got access to me as a child so this gang stalking or their monitoring they're monitoring me might have been well before 1999. It's just they didn't start the harassment and made, didn't make it public until 1999. Once I found that out, I was very terrified. And still my parents wouldn't help me. And I think they, they knew about it. But once I, I got to get some help, in terms of my past, got some therapy and um, went to 12-step meetings and started my spiritual life. I started to get some peace and things started to even out for a while. And at work and in all my relationships, I believe everybody was still part of them, but the harassment was mostly mind games. It was like they had access to my thoughts, what I was doing, and they just make little jibes or, you know, street theater, you know, at work and stuff like that. They would harass me. It was, it was really bad at work because all the political stuff, I mean, work is bad enough with all the political stuff. Then you add this to, you have them mobbing you. So my job history has been very very sporadic. The longest job I've held is is only two years, but I think um, thanks to God, for some reason throughout the time my income, even though my experience has been sporadic, has just increased to where, you know, I was just surprised about that and grateful that something in my life was not totally wrecked. But at the same time, I believe if those gang stalkers were not harassing me, I could have gone a lot further. But, you know, at, at the end, it might have been good that I, it, I didn't go farther. And the reason I say that is, I'm taking a side note here. I have a degree in finance and my dream when I was young was to be on Wall Street to um, you know be a big wig on Wall Street but now with the whole you know country in shambles and all the greed there I really am glad I'm, I'm not part of that Wall Street greed machine and um, maybe God is in control of my life. I believe that one thing worked out and so with all the um, harassment going on and gang stalking maybe something maybe this will somehow work out. That's my career and um, so what happened is so I was going from job to job and my ink income was increasing a little bit and I was harassed at every job but then in 2000 
From 2006 to 2008, I worked at Countrywide. You know, we're in mortgage. We're in the middle of the housing bubble when it exploded. And I was being harassed at work. And my last position there, I was transferred under a new supervisor. It was part of the restructuring. It wasn't my choice. She basically lied to me about a project. And I got angry and I just quit. Uh, no, I didn't quit. I, um, I basically gave her an ultimatum. I said, you either give me a raise or I'm going to quit. She said, no, I can't give you a raise. So I, um, I gave up my two-week notice. So I quit there. And then I went through a period where I wasn't working. And up until that point, I really didn't have an interest in, in politics. Even up to 2008, I didn't know that this was called gang stalking. I didn't know who was doing it. I didn't know why they were doing it to me. But at the end of 2008, I think this is when things started unfurling for me. And when they started ramping up their harassment. In late 2008, I've been going to this group to... Well, actually, I've been going to 12-step meetings, but I started to go to a support group for incest survivors. And I was done with my therapist to help me with my sexual abuse. And up until that point, I thought all of my sexual abuse was... Or mostly was from within my family and people I knew as a child. I never thought that the government was involved. I never thought that there was a satanic aspect to it. So, but what happened, I started going to this new support group. I started talking about my issues and, you know, diving into that. And then I started having this weird dreams and got to thinking that I might have multiple personalities. That, and so that was the strangest thing. But I never thought about having multiple personalities because in the past, because there was no missing time. Like a lot of people who have multiple personalities, they'll have blackouts and there'll be parts of the days that they can't remember but I have never had that problem the only thing that was strange to me and I say this with all seriousness is some days I would wake up with my ass hurting and you know I just I would not know why and that makes me believe that my other personalities what happens is my other personalities get triggered when I'm asleep and that I was part of some flavor of the MK Ultra program and my other personalities are either being raped or you know there's like a bisexual aspect there but that was the only hint that I'm may have had that I um, may have other personalities and in 2008 I started having these dreams and I think why I started having these dreams and other hints of my other personalities is because of all the therapy and work that I did to try to heal before then and I was just getting to the point where I could access, I felt safe to access my other personalities. So what happened is that's when the harassment increased because and, and you know, all this you know, romantic stuff they try to sell you on commercials. But instead I got gang stalked. So I started breaking down mentally. 
and I was a Buddhist back then and I think they even got to the people where I used to worship I um, even my like, my story is I think it started when I first noticed it anyway it was in 1999 I was uh, living in Honolulu, Hawaii. When I look back, I was surprised to think it was before 9-11, before the military intelligence, you know, before they got their additional power and stuff. So I was surprised they started. My cousins and family, and my friends, even, you know, they got to my friends. That's what tripped me out is it started with a friend who I trusted and I just I could not figure out why all these people would betray me so um, I, was, I, was real, I started really breaking down and then I moved back to bed so early and of all places in Hawaii you think it was the Aloha State and people wouldn't do such things but uh, there is a huge military presence there in Hawaii and I was on Oahu so it started there started at work people just mobbing me at work I think they put in cameras where I where I lived cameras and mic and I'd go to work the next day and they'd make comments about what they saw at night in my home. And so that sort of started freaking me out. I was just feeling really bad because I went to Hawaii to find my dream. I just, you know, I wanted to surf while I was surfing. I wanted to have a good life, find a girlfriend.